I'm Greenhouse Bob, and these short videos will help the beginner with a greenhouse learn some of the tricks I've come across in the last 12 years. Come on. I got my wrist watch repaired, and the jeweler had all these curious, intricate tools. And that got me thinking about the tools and the tricks that I've collected over the years for a greenhouse. Let's talk about them. I have this kite flag so that from the house I can see when there's wind and how much. Just another way to monitor the greenhouse because the wind can affect humidity and temperature. Come on. I have most of the tools in the back of the greenhouse Half of them are just for general gardening outside. Here's the number one tool you need. It's a good temperature gauge and a humidity gauge. This has both combined into one. Also, I have a transponder for a digital temperature gauge in the house so that I can monitor the temperature in the greenhouse without always coming out here. Brooms are important to have because a greenhouse is gonna have dirt and I'm afraid to tell you spider webs. So you gotta keep on top of that. Uh, another important item are snippers. These are not cheap, but it's worth getting a good pair. It's a big one. This is for roots and small leaves. Stays ever sharp. Nice to have. And then this guy, boy, is he sharp. If you watched my repotting video, I cut the bottom of a root-bound potted plant with this. Ah, here we go. This is an important one. A moisture meter. We have to keep track of the moisture when we're growing things. Now this is what, about seven inches long, so much longer than sticking your finger in the dirt. Here it's dry, and over here it's moist. So within a couple inches, there's a difference in moisture. Now more often than not, people kill plants by overwatering. So that's the importance of keeping track of the moisture in your pots. Here's another version. It's pH or moisture. pH is the acid or alkaline component of soil. Now that's important if you have specialized plants that care about the acidity. So there's that. Uh, Okay, markers, plant labels, these little wood things. They don't last long, they're thin, they're easy to write on. And I'll tell you, at my age, these are real helpful because I w wouldn't remember what I planted months later. And then after I've started seedlings and transplant them, the stake can go with them out into the garden. Here's another version. I bought these little containers, plastic, and you put the entire seed packet in there so you know what you're growing, and you can refer back to the directions on the back. So those are kind of nice. Oh, and this guy here. <laughs> Some kind of a kitchen tool. And I use that for when I'm transplanting my seedlings. I can just pop them right out. Look at that, boom. Uh, seed trays are an important investment. Um, I reuse them, I clean them, I disinfect them. I got two sizes, a big one here and the smaller ones. Uh, I like to water from the bottom and let the roots bring up what they need. So these clear tops uh, normally go on top, 
but I'm using them here so I can see the moisture level, keep track of that. Now over here, I'm keeping my seed packets. Now I originally bought this made for seed packets plastic container, but that's not a good idea. You don't want sun or heat to get at the seeds, it's gonna ruin them. So I've gone back to these porcelain containers, keeps them dry, keeps them dark, and I buy these at resale stores and garage sales. Now, you can't have too many shovels for handling dirt because you're gonna have dirt in your greenhouse. So I got them transplanting outside. This thing is for cooking Asian noodles. I use it to sift dirt. See, this has a lot of stuff in it. And when I'm starting seedlings, I like to have a finer consistency of soil. So that's what I use that for. And uh, these little uh, biodegradable seed boxes, put the dirt in, put the seedling in, you get the plant. You just put the whole thing into the ground. You don't have to transplant it, which is one less problem for uh, the plant. Here's a nifty item I bought from an online gardening store. Let me show you how it works. Okay, here's my tomato plant, which is a vine, and it's going to get really long. And I want it to go up. So I put this bamboo stake in the ground, and then watch how this works. It clips tightly to the bamboo, but leaves plenty of room for the stem without binding it. Now, if a plant loses leaves, they'll grow back. But once you've hurt the stem on a plant, it's gone. So I really like these little guys. I use them a lot. Now, this might look like a healthy kale microgreen juice to have in the morning, but it's not. It comes, the juice comes from the bottom of my composter out in the backyard. And I use this semi-fertilizer to add the water so when I'm watering plants. Okay, I have a couple open containers of water. This uh, helps with humidity and I can also wash my hands because they're always getting dirty. Here's a trick I learned to clean your utensils. You have a bucket of sand you and add vegetable or corn oil. And then you can clean your metal utensils, right? And the sand is scrubbing the dirt off and the salad oil is lubricating it so it won't rust. Oh, here's a really cool thing. Let me show you this. Okay, I bought this at a garage sale. And I asked the lady, what the heck is it? She hung it in her children's room to help keep their toys organized. They can put different toys in the different levels. It's a nylon with lots of air holes in it. So what I do with it is I can cut our herbs from around the house and clean them and lay them in here for a few days or a week to dry out before I put them into the spice jars. So it's another use of the greenhouse. Now you can buy uh, herb dryers, but this costs five bucks, so what the heck. Anyway, that's some of the tricks and tools that I've learned about over the years. I hope it's been helpful. Let me know what tools you're using. Bye-bye.